Uh, I'm running for governor because uh, Utah needs to be more than it's being right now. It needs to be a leader in the United States, uh, one who embraces uh, the Constitution, uh, one who stands up for the Constitution, um, truly leads out in areas such as education, uh, economic development, uh, lands, uh, land championship issues, and really changes the nature of the political Western landscape. If you go back to the year 2000, uh, when I ran as a, as a legislator, there was a small group of conservatives who got together and formed the Conservative Caucus. And about two years into my uh, political time as a legislator, we began to see some budget shortfalls. And at that time, we had a pretty healthy economy. We were coming out of the 90s. We saw uh, a, a trend that was a little bit disturbing. Um, we, we thought and people projected that we would quickly come out of the little dip that we had seen. But some of us said, you know, whether or not we do, we need to plan, uh, be fiscally conservative and plan for the future. And so we started calling for uh, holding the line on budgets. We, uh, Representative Greg Hughes passed a spending limitations or championed a spending limitations bill. Some of us uh, you know, wanted to keep the rainy day fund intact. And you had this other faction within both the Republican Party and the Democrats who were saying, uh, spend the rainy day fund. You know, it's time to spend the rainy day fund. It's time to boost spending, maybe even talk about increasing taxes. And one of the things that I have seen come out of most politicians, especially uh, I think our governor, is a desire to hold the line assuming that things will just get better naturally. Uh, I think that's a recipe for disaster. Those of us back in 2000 to 2004 who saw this tide coming, who saw this recession coming and called for good fiscal standards, some reform both within the way we spend money, the way we bond, uh, we were kind of uh, the minority at the time. and. I think as time has gone on, we've been, it's been proven that we were correct, that a state should live within its means, that a state should uh, not be bonding in times of trouble uh, to try and get itself out of the trouble. It should not be uh, attempting to uh, maintain spending levels that are unhealthy. And, and we saw that back then. And I, I think that the, diff the primary difference between me and the current governor is we have now seen that the recipe for our fiscal future that Congress has adopted and that Utah has uh, more responsibly adopted is still a recipe that means trouble. The Congressional Budget Office, for example, has said that our economy will collapse in 2037. And that's a nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. And what they wanted us to do was to change the trajectory to make some changes now to create systemic health. But Congress, of course, failed to do so. You know, I ran for Congress in 2010, and one of the prime motivating factors for me in getting into the governor's race was seeing that epic failure in Congress and realizing that perhaps the greatest place that we could make change for the future was in the governor's offices, not just the governor's office of Utah, but the governor's offices of the western states. And that if we would stand up as a state and lead, truly lead out on real fiscal reforms, on real constitutional governance, on some real founding principles, that we could see health uh, for our economy here in the state and we could prepare for a time when the federal government might not get their act together. And that's going to take some bold leadership in, in the areas of economic development, education, uh, land issues, and state sovereignty also. One of the biggest areas of concern for me uh, is obviously uh, the economy and economic development. And what has happened over time is that the government, rather than securing the playing field, so to speak, or to protecting the economy as a free market, they have become players in the economy. They have been orchestrators of the market. And if you've ever wondered why 
we're not seeing ourselves recover successfully. I think it's because government in and of itself has taken too large of a role in not just protecting the playing field and keeping it a free market, but has begun to become the manager of the playing field and the manager of the markets. So I would like to see a future in Utah where uh, we become uh, the freest market in the nation, where we have the fewest business regulations, uh, where we uh, you know, someday eliminate our corporate income tax, reduce our tax burden, and see uh, the revenues of the state go up because we've adopted policies here that are uh, healthy, not just do a little bit better than everybody else around us. Uh, we could do the same in education. Uh, for the, we've been on a merry-go-round in education. And every year you hear the politicians get up and say, well, we want to reduce class sizes and we want to increase funding per pupil. But it never seems to happen. It never materializes. I, I would hope that Utahns would, would step up and acknowledge that those politicians have probably been more worried about their own political careers and systemic control than systemic change and sy systemic health. And if you want to get off that merry-go-round, uh, which is getting us nowhere, then let's start looking at the real problems. One is federal dependence, um, federal direction over education. It should not be there. We should be completely independent in the way we tackle our education issues. Our land issues, whether or not we get to control and manage our own lands, which we don't. 67% of our lands are under the control of the federal government. And so you'll hear people say, well, we need to do something about that, but they've been saying that for 30 years. I think it's time we stepped up and actually took some significant measures to ensure that land isn't just permitted um, by the federal government for our use, but is actually put back into our control so that we determine the use as a state. And that's going to take aggressive, uh, an aggressive set of policies that include probably a better use of the Constitutional Defense Council, uh, use of funds that have been allotted in the past to continue in the future for lawsuits, um, joining with counties and municipalities and trying to get certain lands back, uh, working better with CITLA to help them manage their lands, lands better, maybe trade lands if we need to, try and get more lands into their hands, and overall just generally an ability to develop our economy through our land. I think it needed to be vetted more. Uh, it kind of launched through the legislature. I can appreciate their desire for personal privacy, but uh, to take a bill like that and run it through the session in a very short time and have it signed by the governor only to be kind of brought back and overhauled or, and I think that that's a little bit ridiculous. I think that's a little bit of a breach of trust with the general public. Uh, whether or not they felt they were doing something wrong, it's still a big issue. It's a big deal to the public. It's a big deal to the press. And uh, it should have been dealt with a little bit better. I think if we had some leadership from the top on that issue and many others, HB 116 is another good example, uh, where I think we just lacked some leadership to ensure that people felt good about what was coming through the legislature and whether or not that issue was vetted during the legislative session, which is very appropriate. Uh, that, that's why we have the veto power in the governor, right? I mean, one of the reasons to ensure that that check and balance is made, and obviously it wasn't. Um, that's a deep question, but I will say this. Uh, the, the first oath that a uh, governor takes is to uphold and defend the Constitution of the state of Utah and the Constitution of the United States of America. And I think that uh, veto philosophy centers around uh, essentially whether or not, I guess what you'd call legislative due process occurs, right? Whether the, the procedure has been followed and, and followed adequately, but also whether or not we're acting within the bounds of appropriate government under the Constitution. And uh, I believe my veto philosophy is going to be one that ensures that we're respecting the Constitution, both the state and the federal, and two, that process, uh, the process as it should be has occurred. Um, I, I would like to believe that the role of a governor, uh, especially as it concerns economic development, is to get government out of the way. And what we have seen is we have seen politicians, um, our own governor, I believe, and 
And, you know, he's just following in the footsteps of those who've gone before as they've continually taken greater, a greater and greater role in, in one, trying to create jobs, which they're, they're not charged with doing. Uh, they're charged with, pro again, protecting the playing field and ensuring that the real job creators have an opportunity to create jobs. So I would like to see government withdraw where it can reasonably from the market and uh, diminish regulations, diminish taxes, and create here in Utah a state where businesses can thrive with, with, without a tax burden in the sense of a corporate tax, and uh, two, where they have the opportunity to, uh, let's say if they're uh, energy production or uh, ranching, I mean, you name it, anything that, go, that works on the land, that they have a better opportunity to use the land in a sustainable manner to boost our economy.